Leave this season empty-handed. We're going to get everything that the devil has taken back from us. Amen? Joseph said, I'm not leaving until you bless me. So we're not leaving this time and this season. This is a vital season that we're in. And we're not going to leave with that. We're not, God has already promised us. He's already promised us provision. He's already promised us help. He's already promised us long life. So we have to stand on what the word of God says. So I declare and decree in the name of Jesus Christ that everything the devil has stolen from you shall be returned sevenfold as the word of God has promised. Amen. Give me back my stuff and more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give me back my stuff. I'm coming from Genesis 32, 32, And let's give a little bit of feedback here. Um, we all know the story of Jacob and his brother Esau. We all know that in the beginning that Jacob had stolen his brother's birthrights, his brother's Esau birthrights and his blessing. And it's just amazing how this story un unfolds here. That, you know, we, his name means deceiver. His name means a uh, supplanter. A supplanter is someone that steals somebody's, you know, pretty much their identity on purpose. And we see here that Jacob has stolen, his, that's in uh, chapter 27, Jacob has stolen his brother's Esau birthright. He had deceived his father by taking stew before him, pretending that he was his brother's Esau. Um, but I thought this was really interesting. I said, you know what, God? There's dysfunction in the Bible, just like we have dysfunction in our lives. Because Jacob actually was assisted by his mother, Rebecca, in deceiving um, his father, Isaac. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. You know, deception. So, you know, you know it, it, we, we, have, we have this function in your, in your family. We, we can look to the Bible and blame on the Bible. Amen. So we see here that he was a supplanter, you know, an imposter. He had stolen his brother's identity. Today you can go to jail for that. But praise God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. So it said he was a, um, Jacob means trickster. I said, wow, these are some interesting names that his name relates to. Trickster. Um, it relates to schemer, you know, a swindler. I mean, those are some pretty harsh names, but that's what his name meant. And we see that, you know what, when people place titles on you or what, what people think your name means, you can become that person. If you've been hearing that all your life, oh, Jacob, your name means swindler, or oh, well, your name means schemer, or oh, well, your name means sun planter, or oh, your name means a trickster. But glory be to God, as the story unfolds, we see that God changed his name to Israel. Israel. So let's start over here with um, uh, Genesis 32, 22, where I'm coming, my story's coming from, amen? 22. You know, we see here that uh, Jake, Jacob wrestled with the God. He wrestled with an angel of God. So it says here, number 22, and he arose that night and took his two wives his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, the angel that didn't prevail against uh, Jacob, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint, meaning that he hit him to get him off of him. And you're going to have to fight the devil hard to get him off of you, to get him off of your stuff, to get him off of your finances, to get back your health, to get back your mind, your children, your marriage. You're going to have to fight to get the devil off of your stuff. Amen. So it says he hit him in the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob was out of joint and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. That's what the angel was saying. The, 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 let, let me go. For the angel of the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob said, oh, I'm not going to leave this time. I'm not going to leave this place until you bless me. I'm not going to leave until you bless me. And we have to make up in this hour and in this season that we're not going to leave until God bless us. God has promised us. He's already given us his word. It says the promises of God are yes and amen. His word shall not return to him void. 
He is a promise keeper. He is a man. He's not a man that he should lie. He is God all by himself almighty, and he keeps his promises. So he said here, but I will not let you go. Meaning that you cannot, right now, you cannot let go of what the word of God says about your health. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, and then that is the final authority. I am blessed coming in and going out. That is the final authority. God says, whatever you put your hands to shall prosper. That is the final authority. There is no lack in your life because that is the final authority. So you have to fight. You have to fight the good fight of faith. But you have to understand that you're fighting against principalities. You're fighting against powers. You're fighting against the rule of darkness. So you, 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 you're wrestling in this thing. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So you have to make up in your mind, oh, I'm not leaving this time. Is there anybody else who didn't been through too much? Is there anybody who's expecting? Is there anything the devil has already robbed you, st stole your joy, taken your marriage, got his hand on your mind, taken your children? Oh, yeah, I want my stuff back in the name of Jesus and more. Because God says, I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. So see, whatever you, your mind can conceive, whatever you can think, God says, I'm able to do exceedingly and more abundantly than that. So I said, okay, God. He said, I'm not leaving until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? So now he's trying to inquire, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him right there. So Jacob called the name of that place Penal, for I have seen God face to face. Has anybody seen God face to face in their situation? Amen. Have you seen him in your finances? Have you seen him in your health? Has God showed up for you? It says, I have seen God face to face. See, God had visited Jacob even after everything he had done. He deceiving his brother. The, the thing about the blessing had already come forth through Isaac. And we know that God is not, he does not, his word is the same today, yesterday, forevermore. So we know that we are the seed of Abraham. And see, the covenant had already went forth. So he said, he said my father, my father Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. See, we're under that covenant, and we have a right, we have a blood-bought right to come, not only come boldly to the throne of God, but to do as Jacob did. As the story progresses, we see how Jacob puts God in remembrance. He said, oh, no, the God of my father, which is the God of Abraham, which is our father. Because like I said, we are the seed of Abraham, and we're under that covenant. The same thing that God promised Abraham belonged to us. He said, I will make your name great. Uh -huh. I'm going to bless you coming in, bless you going out. But yeah, see, the same things that God promised Abraham belongs to us. See, we are the redeemed of the Lord. And God said in Galatians that 3.13 that we've been redeemed from poverty. We've been redeemed from sickness. And we've been redeemed from death. But the devil has constantly uh, taken these things from the body of Christ. We got saints that are sick in their body, sick in their mind. We got saints that are walking in poverty and they're not doing nothing about it. But you have got to stand on the word of God. Stand on what God has already promised. And that's what Jacob did, even with the name, what his name meant. He still chose to believe God. He still chose to believe that God would deliver him, even what he had done, deception. But, you know, just because you do something wrong, even when your life takes a, a different turn, you know, there's always room for change, amen? You don't have to settle for the state you're in. You don't have to settle. Well, with my family's been always doing this. This is how it's always been done. The devil is a lie. You don't have to settle for, you know, you know, you know, you have to break and take authority over those generational curses. Oh, well, this is how we do it in my family. Well, it's been going on for the last 50 years. Well, the devil is a lie. It does not have to continue. Somebody has to break that yoke 
in the name of Jesus. Somebody has to speak life into that death situation. Amen. So I said, he said here, for I have seen God face to face and my life has been preserved. My life has been spared. I would like to think that Jacob was thinking about what he was doing. He was thinking about how I deceived my father. How I went before him and lied. When he asked me, you sound like Jacob. You sound like Jacob, but you, you, you feel like Esau. Is this you? Y yes, yes, it is. He, he kept saying, y y y I am. I, 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 it is I. And, you know, you know, you could see Isaac because he was in his old age struggling with that thing. But, you know, you're going to believe your child most of the time, right? And you're definitely going to believe something because Esau was hairy. So if you, you're totally going to feel, you know, well, this feels like my son. You're not really thinking someone's going to take some hair off an animal or put on, you know, one of them ruggy rugs. You're not really thinking that your own child would deceive you. You're not really thinking that your own child was still the other child's birthright. You're not really thinking that your child was still your brother's blessing. Not your child. And you're definitely not thinking, well, he didn't know, that his wife, Rebecca, had taken part, taken part, taken part of the deception. But you know, as, as the story progresses, when we see about Laman, her, bro, her, Laman, uh, her brother, that uh, Jacob goes to stay, stays with, I mean, he deceived uh, Jacob. But I said, you know, you read what you sow. You know, he had to work 20 years. 14 for Leah, 14, actually the whole 14 was with Rachel, but uh, uh, Laban deceived him. He wanted Rachel, but he gave him Leah. And then he had to work another seven years for Rachel. Then he had to work another six years for the livestock. So I said, boy, this is, this, this is some deception. When I was sitting there, I was thinking, okay, God, see, anything that's happening in real life is already in this word. See, that was dysfunction. That, I mean, deception. Already we can see deception all through the Bible. But God is so graceful and so merciful. Because I would like to think that that thing was stuck with Jacob. Stuck with him all the way. He said, I have seen God face to face. I have spent time with God. I have believed God. And he has preserved my life. Meaning that he obviously believed he did not deserve it. Amen. He did not, after what he had done, deception. Then he had to go on the run. Then he left layman. I mean, with so many different things. You know, it, God had preserved my life. You know, he said he's preserved my life. So Jacob called the name of the place, Penal, for I have seen God face to face, and my life has been spared. My life has been preserved. Just as he crossed over, Penal, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle of that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle of that shrank. So we see here that, you know, Jacob wrestled with an angel of God and a messenger. And we see here that, you know, God blessed him in spite of. See, that's why we can't allow people to put labels on us, to tell people that you're not going to be nothing because you made a mistake in life. You know, we have to believe what God says, that old things have passed away, that things are new, whom the Son has set free. So you have to believe you have been set free free from the bondages and the stronghold of your family. You have to believe you've been set free from the bondage of the things in your life, the mistakes that you have made. He said, I have seen God face to face, and he has preserved me. He has spared my life. We serve a gracious and merciful God. See, we serve a God that's redeeming. We serve a God that loves us in spite of ourselves. We serve a God whose love is so unconditional that only he can turn things around, that only he can make your enemies your footstool, even when you're doing right. See, we serve a God who's already given us grace, that grace that is sufficient, that grace that helps you in time of trouble. We serve a grace, God that's given us grace, that grace that is abounding. God loves us. Even though the devil may meant wrong, God's God has a plan and purpose for our life. That's why we cannot get stuck in the situation, the circumstances that we're in and say, this is it. 
This is what God has for me. No, that's not what God has for you. If you begin to seek God's face and get before God his word, study his word to show yourself approved, praying always and all time in the power of the in the Holy Ghost, you can get your help and get your deliverance and the restoration that you need. Amen. So he said he wrestled the robot wrestled with the angel of God, wrestling with God. And he said, I have seen God face to face. God has helped me in my time of distress, is what he said. He has helped me in my time of when I might flow flee from my brother. Because when he deceived his father, his brother had hatred in his heart. He says, when my father go, I'm going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When my father died, oh, I'm, I'm going to kill him. Because he had swindled him out of his birthright. He had swindled him out of the blessings that God had, that his father had for him. And when Esau came back from the field, he, he didn't, it wasn't, wasn't no blessing pretty much left for him. The blessing that Isaac did give him, he told him, okay, you're you going to be blessed in, in, in the field. Mm-hmm. You're going you're gonna to live by the sword. Uh-huh. But you, you're going to serve your brother. I don't know if that's no real blessing. I'm, I'm going to serve. You, you, you're going to serve you, your, your brother. That, that, that was the blessing. Based on everything that God had already, you know, Isaac had already had given the blessing to Jacob. You know, and, but this was what he had left over. He pleaded with him, do you have anything for me? Do you see, I thank God that we serve a God. His, his supply never runs out. But he was going before his father said, do you you, you have anything for me? Let's look over there, 27. You, is there anything left? You know, you know, let's look at 20. Uh, Esau's hope, lost hope, number 30. He said, now it happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out. Now he running, running with, like a fat cow. You know, running with the, running with, running with the blessing. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, let my father rise and eat of his son game. See, that's Esau coming before his father with the stew that his father had asked him to go out to. But Rebecca overheard, overheard the story and brought deception to the situation. He says, he also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, let, let, let my father rise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. That your soul, because the blessing always went to the, the elder son. And Esau was the elder son and always went to the first son. And his father said, and his father Isaac said to him, who are you? Because he, wait a minute, I didn't, wait a minute, I didn't get the blessing to somebody else. He said, so he said, I am your son, your, your firstborn Esau. You know, he's coming to get his blessing because the blessing goes to the first. He said that Isaac trembled, trembled because now he's come to the conclusion that I, I've been deceived. He trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried an exceedingly great and bitter cry. I mean, when you think about your blessing, everything that was going to be bestowed upon you, he weeped bitterly. He weeped bitter, b- bitterly and said to his father, Bless me also, O oh my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit. Your brother, the very thing his name means, and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is, it, 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 is he not rightly named Jacob? See, he was saying that that's why his name is called the supplant. Uh-huh. That's why his name means schemer. Uh-huh. That's, that's why you a trickster. Uh huh. You a swindler. Yeah. Th- does his name? That's what his name. His very name means. So he said, um, "Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He has stolen from me on purpose both these times. He has stolen my birthright. He has stolen my blessings both times. He has deceived me. And so he took away my birthright. And now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said." Have you not reserved anything? You know, is there anything left? Do you have anything? Do you have any blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, 
I have made him your master. And all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do, what, what shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me. Me also, O my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of the heaven from above. But your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and he shall come to pass, and you shall serve your brother, and he shall come to pass when you become restless. Then you shall speak, then you shall, then you shall break his yoke from your neck. And then we see here, you know, he says Esau. I mean, we hear Esau's story. So Esau hated, you know, hated. That's what we saw. We said dysfunction. Esau hated his brother Jacob because of the blessing which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, see, that thing was planted. Can you imagine going through life, you know, hating your brother? You mean you're flesh and blood. I mean, so you're going through life, you know, with this unforgiveness, the spirit of unforgiveness. You know, he hated him. And he said here, he said, the days of mourning of my father shall come. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. I will kill so that that hatred. So we see here that Jacob fled. He fled to a place that God had told him to go. But as we, the story progresses, I, you know, um, as the story progresses, he goes to stay with the brother Laban. As we see, we see that he, he, he swindled him, had to serve him 20 years for, for two wives. But the thing about it, that here, that God blessed Jacob because, like we said, God is not a man that he should lie. He still blessed Jacob. Jacob had wives. He had concubines. He had livestock. He had plenty, plenty, plenty to, to live off of. And so it says here, as we continue on, it says, number 33, now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming. See, God has, you know, his father, his mother has sent him away. Then he was gone away. Then he told him, I'm going to take you back to your, 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 go back to your country. Go back to, you know, God told him to, to go back after he blessed them and changed his name. He told him to, to go back to your country. Go back to where your, your father, to go back to where your family is. Go back. So he says, now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming. See, they hadn't seen each other in a while. And the last thing he got word he got by his brother Esau is that I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. So we can see here that Jacob was gripped with fear. Because, you know, you, you, you're going back to something. You already know what you're going with. But one thing I like about Jacob is that he, he said, God, you told me that if I went back, that you would prosper me. And see, prosperity is not just financial. God says, beloved, I wish above all things that they may prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper. So when we talk about the full manifestation of prosperity, of prospering, we're not just talking about finances. We're talking about God wants us to be prosperous in our body. He does not want sickness to overtake us in the name of Jesus. You know, when we talk about prosperity, he wants our marriages to be prosperous. He wants our relationships to be prosperous. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that they may prosper, uh -huh. be in good health, uh -huh, even as your soul prosper. So Jacob says, God, you have told me to go back to my country, and you have promised me that you would bless me. So we see here in 33, he says, uh, and Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there was Esau coming with him with 400 men. So I think if I looked out and I saw 400 men and you know, I see my brother and the last words I get that, I'm going to kill you. As soon as your father roll over, oh, you're a dead man. So that, you know, that's, that's in your mind. And then you're dealing with the guilt of, of what you've done. Still in his birthright. You know, just greed. You know, just selfishness. Still in his birthright and taking his blessings. But you see how he got deceived in the process by his uncle Laman, his, his, his mother's brother. Amen. So he says here, um, he sees his brother approaching with 400 men. So he divided, he divided, he said, you know what? Well, let's just divide up the children. Because, you know, that way, you know, he, attack, he can't attack us all. But if we scatter, you know, you, you, he, can't, he can't kill us all. So he says here, um, if you afflict my daughters, or, oh, oh, this, the wind and blooming pages. Amen. 
got to be on track, right, man? Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times. See, let me read that again because I want you to see what had transpired. When he saw his brother coming with 400 men, it said he trembled. He had anxiety because the last thing he heard is that my brother, he's going to kill me. So I thought this was really interesting because what, 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 the, what this says here, what we see here in 33 2, and he put, put the maid servants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, Rachel and Joseph left. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times. See, you know, when I saw that seven times, it made me think anything the devil takes from you, you're going to get it seven times forward. Amen. And so when I saw seven times, I said, whoa, seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau. See, only God can allow time for healing if we allow him to. Only God. See, the thing about it, when he came face to face with the angel of God, God had given him a new name, Israel. And see, when you come face to face with God, when you come into God's presence, God can bring the restoration. He can bring the deliverance that you need. He can restore relationships. God says, I will restore, you know, what the locust has taken. See, only God can redeem the time. Amen? And it says that when he approached his brother with all his goods, he bowed before him seven times. See, I would say Jacob was tired. Amen? You get tired of running. He had already been with the brother, his, his uncles, 20 years. Now you still running. Not with your family. Can't go before your father. Not with, you know, you got, you got your wife and your kids. But, you know, you, you, your, your blood, you know, you want to see your, your father. You want to sit and talk with your father. You know, your father's on, on his deathbed practically. You know what I'm saying? So you, you want to go back. He said, go back, God tells him, go back to your country, and I will bless you. Go back, go back. See, if God tells you to go back to something that he brought you out of, but if he tells you to go back to something, don't you know God is going to bring deliverance? Don't you know God has something there for you? Don't you know there's forgiveness, you know? Don't you know there's restoration? If God tells you to go back to something, he, he, he has he has something wonderful for you. There's truly a blessing there. There's truly restoration there. So he said that, you know, after he saw his brother with the 400, and, you know, anxiety and fear had come over him, he said, then he crossed over before them and bowed, him, bowed himself to the ground. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He humbled himself before his brother. Now, he was master over his brother. His father, would have, I said, I have made... Your brother master over you. But we see right here that Jacob is bowing down before his brother. He's surrendering. He's submission. Amen? And sometimes, you know, you have to go back to a situation, to something that could, be, could, have, could have hurt you, whether you hurt them or they hurt you. And sometimes you have to go back. And you have to humble yourself. You, you have to set pride aside. So you can move forth in forgiveness. So that you can move forth in true repentance. Move forth in deliverance and restoration. And I would like to see, say here that when Joe Jacob went before God, when he came face to face with God, God had restored him. Is there anybody here needs restoration in their family? Amen. Is there anybody here that needs restoration in their family? Is believing God for salvation for the family members? Believing God for your marriage to be restored? Believing God that your children's minds be restored? Are we believing God for anything? Amen? So he said, then he crossed over before them, bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him. See, Old things are passed away. See, God had changed his name. You're no longer going to be looked at as a swindler. Uh huh. You're no longer going to be looked at as a trickster. Whatever labels society has placed on you, whatever you, so labels your own parents could have placed on you, or oh, you ain't going to be no good for nothing, or oh, you just like your daddy. 
You know, things that people say, things parents say to children, you ain't going to be nothing. Boy, you just stupid. Every, you, you, every time I turn around, I got to tell you the same thing over and over. See, we don't have to receive those things. You have to believe that God has more and better for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So he was no longer looked at the trickster, the deceiver, the sub, you know, supplanter. God said, I'm, your name is going to be Israel. Uh -huh. So when Esau approached him, because he has been in the presence of God, Jacob, he had already prepared his brother's heart. So it says here that he ran to meet him. And when he ran to meet him, he kissed, the ne he kissed his neck. You know, that lets me know when he saw his brother, he wasn't thinking about the past. He went over there and caressed his brother that he hadn't seen, hadn't seen in more than 20 years. He went to go love on his brother, meaning to say, it's all good. It's all good with me. I have th th I'm not worried about that thing. So he says here that he, but Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And then they wept. And then they wept. Then they thought about all the time that had come between them. And then they wept. That mean, they cried. Two grown men crying in each other's arms, thinking about all the lost time. But God said he can, he died as a redeemer of the time. So they sat there and said that they, he, they sat there and he wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the women. Esau lifted his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, who are these? Now you ain't seen your relatives. You know, you got two wives. You got, you got uh, children. You got all this cattle. Well, who are these people? That's what Esau said. He said, these are my maid servants that came near and their children, and they bowed down. And Lisa, Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, these are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. Now we see here that Jacob is looking for favor from, from his brother Esau. He said, I'm giving you this stuff. I, I brought these things to, to bless you. You know, I, I brought these things to find favor in the sight. Now he's calling his brother the Lord. He said, I've come before you, and I've brought these things. I've come to find favor in the sight of the Lord. But Esau said, now you know you live in large and in charge. You know you do. You, you. He, said, he told him, oh, oh, I'm large and in charge. Uh, you go ahead and keep that because I have more than enough. Uh, you know, I, I, you've been gone a long time. I, I'm running the show up here. So you go ahead and keep that little stuff because I got plenty where, where, I, where I came from. 400 horsemen, 400 men. Oh, yeah, you're running the show all right. He said, but Esau said, I have, I have enough, my brother. Keep that little stuff you have. And Jacob said, no, please. If I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my presence from my hand. You know, in so much as I have seen your face. See, he thought that seeing the face of his brother he has seen the face of God because we know when we come before God, there, there is restoration. See, when we come before God, only God's grace can bring can, can, this type of forgiveness. I mean, you had taken everything, his birthright and his blessing. He said, for if I, to see you, my brother, to see you, my brother, that I haven't seen for a while, I have seen face to face with God. Surely God's favor is shining upon me because you know, if you've forgiven me for what I've done, surely God is in the place and God is for me. But see, one thing Jacob always did, he said when he saw, when he was going to meet his brother, he said, God, you told me to go back. And you told me that you would prosper me. Putting God in remembrance. See, when you're going to get back your stuff, you have to put God in remembrance. God, you promised me that wealth and riches are in my hands. God, you promised me that I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. You promised me that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. See, no matter what that looks like in the natural realm, we got to stay in the spiritual realm. We got to say what God said. So, well, no matter what the circumstance or situation looks like, we have to choose to believe God. He said, God, you, 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 you told me this is what you said. That if I go back, that you're going to prosper me. 
You're going to restore my relationship with me and my brother without having to say, you're going to restore my relationship, God. If you, you have me to go back, my, my brother's going to kill me. You, you have me go back. But he said, you, you said. See, we have to say what God says to put him in remembrance. Put him in remembrance of what God has already said. See, we are the seed of Abraham. We already have a blood by right. The covenant already belongs to us as well. But we, you have to know what the word of God says. You have to know what the promises said because God already said the promises of God are yes and amen. I am not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. God always keeps his word. God always keeps his promise. But you got to, hey, keep God accountable. Keep, the, keep it before God. God, you said. God, you promised me you'd make my enemies my footstool. God, you said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, you promised me, God, my children, if I, if I teach, teach a child in the way they should go, and when they grow up, they shall not depart. So we don't have to worry about our children when we have the word, been speaking the word over their lives. Amen? God, you promised that if I teach them, when they grow old, they won't have to depart. All you have to do in the process, as they become adults and go with their life, thank you, God, that your word should not return to your boy. Thank you, God, for watching over my children. Thank you, God, for meeting my needs. See, you know, when we go before God in prayer, we must believe that we've already received it. So in the meantime, before that thing manifests, you just thanking God. God, I thank you for my healing in my body. God, I'm thank you that I'm walking in wholeness. God, I'm thank you that you're meeting my needs. God, I'm thank you that men shall sow into my bosom. Whatever you believe in God for, go back and find the promise so you can put God in remembrance. Give it back to him like Jacob said. God, you said you're going to prosper me if I went back. And he did that very thing. So it says here, number 11, please take my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me. Please take my blessing. Now he pleaded. And he said, well, now look, brother. Now God has blessed me too. He said, please take my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me and because, and because I have enough. So he urged him and he took it. He took it. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are weak because now the brother Esau wants him to come back. Well, let's come back and go, go family. But see, Jacob went back to the place, Bethel. Because God had, that's the, the, was the house of God, and that's where God had told him to go. So he went back there because, see, now they both had so much stuff that they couldn't even dwell together. Because it was too much, they had so much stuff, God had graciously blessed them both that they couldn't even, they couldn't even dwell in the same place. But see, what we learn here is that, see, Jacob humbled himself. See, he humbled himself. And God restored everything. He restored finances. He restored his relationship with his brother. He was able to go back and see his father. God brought that restoration. And as we see, as the story progresses, that God over in uh, 35, he said, God says to Jacob, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but it will be called Israel. Your name will be called Israel. And see, God had changed him. See, what we see here that God brought total prosperity, that God brought total restoration. And only the God we serve can do that if we allow him and come before God with a humble heart as Jacob did. Amen? So we have to make up in our mind not to leave this season empty-handed. Not to leave this season, whatever you believe in and trust in God for, whatever you believe in, if you're trusting God for marriage, if you're trusting God to restore your finances, if you're trusting God to heal your body, if you're trusting God for school, you have to make up in your mind. And like Jacob said, oh, I'm not leaving. Oh, I'm not leaving here until you bless me. We, we, we be going to be fighting up in here. We're going to be right here all day. Until the, the angel said, well, she, I got to hit him. I got to get him off of me. And that's what you have to do. You're going to have to fight to get the devil off you and off your things that God has already promised you. Amen? It says the violent take it by force. And in this season, you're going to have to take what you want by force. You're going to, fail. You're going to have to faith it. You're going to have to walk by faith and trust God no matter what it looks like. You know, God said he going to redeem the time, Ephesians 5, 16 to 18. We see that he redeems the time. You know, God is only, God is able to bring forth the restoration. What he says over there in Job 2, 25, 28. I, the locust, everything the locust, everything that swindler, that devil has taken, uh-huh, the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, uh-huh, I'm able to restore that. 
See, we have to look to God that even when it looks real glim. And I'm sure that when Jacob went up there, had been gone from the family, his, his brother coming here, he thinking his brother coming to attack, you got this anxiety, you got this fear. See, in spite of that, we have to believe what God has already said. And what Jacob held on to, God, you said. You said, God, if I went back, you're going to prosper me. See, you have, we have to believe that no matter what it looks like in our lives, what it looks like, that we have to believe that what God says, what does God have to say about us? We don't have to accept the titles that the, that the society has placed upon us. We have to go back and believe what God has says. You know, it says, you know, that, you know, he was a deceiver, but God changed his name. See, only God can change your name and change your circumstance and your situation. Oh, you know, on this blood that Jesus gave, this, this blood has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. No matter what, you, what you've done in your past, it is your past. Uh huh. What well, somebody said, when your past come knock and tell them, you don't live here anymore. Your past has nothing new to say. And see, so you've you got to be bold like that because the devil will talk loud in, in your ear. You know, he will, continue, he will continue to send people from your past to remind you, oh, I remember you was like this. Oh, I remember when you was doing that. Please. Uh huh. And you tell them, like Paul said, I have wronged no man. Amen. Uh huh. Old things have passed away. I am under the blood. So you have to put people in their chair because people and friends and family members will look at you because they think they know you. But I'm like Jesus. Who is my father? My mother? If you ain't serving Jesus Christ, who, who are you really? Let's keep it real. Who, who are you? So, you know, you have to trust God that whatever God has said, whatever God has called you, whatever God has said to you in your private time, Whatever God has spoken in and over your life, over your marriage, over your finances, you have to believe what God said and not society. Because like we said, only God can reconcile. It says his brother Esau ran to him, kissed him on his neck, and they wept. See, only God can bring that type of restoration. And sometimes you may, you may, things may take time, but God is still able. Amen? Did this bless anybody? Did this bless anybody? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that went forth in the name of Jesus Christ, God. And I thank and praise you that it has fallen on good ground this day, Father God. I pray that your will has been done, Father God. And I thank you for bringing race to restoration, Father God, in every dead situation today, God. I thank you for bringing restoration, Father God, in everybody's body, limb, joint, muscles, Father God. I thank you for bringing restoration, Father God, in, your, in our finances, Father God, in our relationships, Father God. I thank you for redeeming the time. Time, Father God, for restoring all that the evil one has taken for us, Father God. But I thank you by faith, Father God. We take it by force, Father. Faith, we take it by force, Father God. And we walk faith to faith, Father God. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus' mighty name, God. Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. How many of you are ready to wrestle? Amen. Amen. That was a good, very, very powerful word. Very powerful word. You know, especially restoration. Man, it was amazing, you know, when, when you showed in there how God used that, how he came and his intentions was to get out of the hot water that he had created for himself. You know, so he staged the, 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 his family to, you know, get sympathy. Then... He had all this stuff that he was going to give his brothers and, you know, make amends. But God had already dealt with his brother's heart. That's true forgiveness. And no matter what it was, he forgave him. And then he said, man, I got, you know, God has blessed me above and beyond what you could even conceive. You know, I, I was just blown away by that because I had never seen that as an act of forgiveness till today. I mean, that's powerful. And it all started with a man that was dedicated to wrestle for a blessing. Understand this now. Wrestle. That means he, that this individual said, I'm going to have some close up counter contact. And I'm not letting go until I'm blessed. How many of you can really say that in your heart? That I'm going to hold on, Lord, till I'm blessed. Amen. So that word wrestle means it was some conflict. It was, some, you know, so what am I saying? You got to, you gonna have to wrestle for that blessing, Amen. I, I'm like, yes, yes. I got so much out of that. I'm like, okay, 
Okay, okay. God restores a man's name. He restores a man's image. He restores a man's family. Just because this man's heart was right to get a blessing. My God, that's powerful. Think about it. If you need restoration in any area in your life, let this be a key. Let this be a key for you. That it's come time for you to have an encounter with God. It's time for you to hold on to God. Get that restoration. Get that new start. Get that new name. Get that fresh image. Get that restoration in your, in, in your finances, in your health, in your marriage, in your family, with your children. Get that restoration. Man. Hold on to it. And then I didn't even put the two together, but the song that God had me play today, Strong Faith. That man had strong faith to wrestle with an angel. Come on now. Come on. And even the angel says, wait, 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 wait hold up. <laughs> man, we went with this all night. <laughs> but he left that place with a new name, with a new future. And he had a limp which identifies he had a new walk in life. Amen? Amen. We're about to have our friend. We want to thank you again, Elder, for allowing the Lord to use you in such a powerful way because over the last several weeks, what God has been speaking through you has been blessing not only myself, but I know the entire church. And I thank God for what God is doing, you know, through this. I, I really do. So as I said, prepare your offering. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand and we will get you one. All right. Get you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. All right. Praise God. We profess this day unto the Lord that we have come into the inheritance which the Lord swore to give us. We are in the land which you have provided for us in Jesus Christ, the kingdom of Almighty God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we were sinners serving Satan. But because of you, you brought us out of darkness and into the light. Father, we do this out of love. We sow, Lord God, our offering, our tithes, Lord God, and we bring them into the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our high priest. We bring the first fruit of our income, the tithe to you, and we worship the Lord our God with it. Lord Jesus, we also bring our free will offerings to you today. We rejoice in all the good which you have given unto us in our household. We have listened to the voice of our Lord and our God and have done according to all that he has commanded us. Now look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless us as you said in your word. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. I'd like to open it up if there's anyone that's in need of prayer. Um, looks like I know everyone here. You're saved. So I, won't, I don't have to give the invitation, but I will anyway, just in case. You know. <laughs> For those that are uh, watching us through Ustream, I'd like to give you an invitation. If you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, for you to take time and do it today. If the message that you heard today has touched your heart, it was because the Lord had something for you. And wherever you're at right now that you may be listening to us, if you just take a moment and repeat this prayer. Lord God, I thank you, Lord. No, take that down, please. Lord God, I thank you that you and you alone are God. I thank you, Lord God, that as I come before you today, I give you my life. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Father, I recognize that he was born into this world. He lived in this world. He died, and he rose again on the third day, and today he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. 
So I thank you, Lord God, for salvation. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, I can have salvation. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Simple as that. There may be those of you that may need the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All you have to do, the Bible says, is ask God, and you will receive. Amen? Amen. All right. So we come now to basically the conclusion of our service. We thank you. We thank you for or each and every one of you that is here, uh, except for, I forgot one thing, communion. Praise God. All right, if you can come forth with communion. Yeah, that's why I need help. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. As, the, as they're passing out the communion cups, I'd like to also, you know, bring your attention to uh, 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to start at 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he was given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. In my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I really like what Paul said. He says, For what I have received of the Lord. This that Paul received was a divine revelation directly from God. What he's referring to and what Jesus was referring to is back over in Exodus 12, the Passover. I also will bring your attention to Hebrews 9 and 22 that says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. I also bring you to Leviticus 17 and 11. It says that the life is in the blood. I also want to remind you of the many offerings that were given throughout the Old Testament for atonement. But because of Jesus' blood, we have remission. And as we come before the throne of grace, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that we're able to come to this table. And we focus on you, not on ourselves, but we focus on you. We focus on the shed blood that was shed for us. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. As we take the bread, if you hold it up, Father, we... We take this today, Lord God, as a symbol, Lord God, of your body, which was given for us. We thank you, Father, for it. Please partake. Father, as we hold this cup, we thank you, Lord God, for the shed blood that was shed for us. Because of this blood, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Because of this blood, Father, Sins have been remiss. Remissed. We thank you, Lord God, for this in the name of Jesus. Please partake. Scripture says, as often as we do this, we put him in remembrance. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, for real, we're at the end of our service. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If I can have Matt go for all. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for your love. 
receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because see, my wife is here. Nobody even knew. But this morning, I had prayed and asked God to help me with the cheese. I had asked him, set in my office, and I did that. That's why I, I love God. He always knows. You see, he always knows. I appreciate you guys. I, I really do. You, don't, you really don't know. You really don't know how much because of the prayers that go forth. If it wasn't for a lot of your prayers, I don't know how, but it's because of those prayers that the exchange is real. Even in my moment, Lord, man, what the heck? God comes through and has somebody like a sister like this, like Pastor, sit down and buy it and say, Man, I will pray. You know, I will pray. I thank God for that, but nobody knew that. 
nobody can do that. Me and God can sit there and sit there and pray the prayer and ask him to help me with the pig and help me to deal with what I deal with. So I wanted to say that because sometimes we're not sure if it's God or not. But yes, it will. I tell you all, unless you see God, you never know if God is working through you or not. You never know how. You never start to exercise your gift. You see, you see, you never know. And that was a word from God to Tammy for you to say that. That means that you know your relationship is getting closer and closer. And I really like to say, you know, publicly, that your commitment to Lost Souls Deliverance Ministry for the last two years, you have shown faithfulness in that Bible study for two years and some change, two years, eight months. You, in the last three, four months, we have not missed a time on, you know, study. The Bible says, people, and I want to tell you, he that hungers and thirsts shall be filled. Enrique, your drive all the way out in Orange County to come here, you know, and I know sometimes it's hard for you to get here. I know that. But yet and still, you make it. Never. God will not honor your commitment. God will honor that commitment. Whatever you're believing God for, trust me, it's going to happen. You just have to do like we learned today. You've got to hold on. You've got to wrestle. Just hold on. You may not know where it's coming from, how it's coming, but believe one thing. It is surely you can believe that. I think it's in Isaiah 55. Whose report are you going to believe? <laughs> Whose report are you going to believe? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. We have women and men up here today, and God does not want somebody. And I was like, like, you know, like, praise God. But before we go any further, let's get out of here. All right. We have where uh, there's the uh, uh, housewarming. Praise God. Praise God. Well, there's food out in the back for those of you who want to. Uh, if they're not here, if I can get the men to go ahead and break down the um, the tents that's back there, because we were going to start this after service, and it is after service. Uh, no, I'm serious. You know, people have to learn. It's after service. Uh, the gifts that were brought, if they could be, uh, I don't know who wants to be responsible for the gifts. Uh, we have gifts for uh, Patricia, and I know some of you others may have. So who's going to take responsibility for the gifts? Or you could leave them in the office back there, and she can get them when she comes. You know, because if you have, all right, let's do it like this. If you have any gifts, put them in the office, all right? Put them in the office. Whenever she comes, she can pick up the gifts. You know, she can pick them up either Thursday night or next Sunday. Okay, put them in the office, all right? Uh, if those of you that want to eat, there's food out there. You can grab you something, make yourself at home, all right? Then after that, you can leave. You can leave now. You want to know. <laughs> Praise God. Is there any comments from anyone before we leave? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the slightest idea. Is it plugged in? Well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and let you go. I'll find out about that right now. All right, thank you.